Halfland, an ahistorical prehistory. The Battle of Bleakbrook. In the year 97 of the Common Reckoning, Orm marched through the Geitsmark and gathered to him an army of dwarves. More than 600 flocked to his standard, and Orm marched them toward the hill hold. At that time, the king of the dwarves of the Dark Hills was Botulf, a seven-year-old child. The rule of the Dark Hills was therefore in the hands of a regent, Botulf's uncle, Bygarth. Bygarth was not unprepared for war. He had already mustered his troops in readiness for an attack on Unnuscrag. Abandoning this intention for the moment, he diverted his attention to Orm and led his dwarves north. The two armies met at the village of Bleakbrook, which stood athwart the stream of that name to the northwest of the hillhold. Bygarth had reached the village first. He stationed his spear dwarves, some 250 of them, in the centre of the village, from where a narrow lane ran down to the bleak brook, which was spanned at this point by a narrow plank bridge. Bygarth sent his crossbow dwarves over this bridge to harry Orm's forces as they approached the village. Bygarth had over 200 crossbow dwarves, professional fighting dwarves clad in stout gambeson coats. They split into three groups. A group was positioned in the village fields, with a smaller group positioned on each flank, in patches of woodland. Orm's army was larger than that of Bygarth, but whereas Bygarth commanded the professional standing army of the Dark Hills, well equipped and well disciplined, Orm's forces were not professional fighting dwarves and were not as well drilled. Orm had 350 spear dwarves, similarly equipped to those of Bygarth, clad in mail and bearing shields and spears. He also had over 250 crossbow dwarves, who were unarmoured. Orm's scouts had informed him that Bygarth was at Bleak Brook, and Orm had no desire to blunder into an ambush. He started the battle cautiously, sending a group of his crossbow dwarves forward on his left, advancing warily through an area of woodland to scout out the ground. On his right, he pushed another group of crossbow dwarves up onto a ridge overlooking the village. Behind these crossbow dwarves, at the foot of the ridge and concealed by it, were half of Orm's spear dwarves. Orm's left-hand group of crossbow dwarves had now reached the edge of the woodland. In front of them was an area of open ground, beyond which was another patch of woodland. To the right of that woodland, a track led to the plank bridge and the centre of the village, and to the right of that were the dry stone walls of the village fields. All looked peaceful. But appearances can be deceptive. Even as Orm's dwarves peered out of the trees, crossbow bolts were launched at them from the trees opposite. Bygarth's crossbow dwarves were accurate and deadly, and Orm's dwarves suffered accordingly. Orm now ordered his remaining crossbow dwarves forward to support their fellows who were being engaged on his left. The group of crossbow dwarves atop the ridge on Orm's right could see the battlefield laid out before them. Bygarth's dwarves in the village fields were moving towards Orm's left flank to support the developing crossbow battle. This meant that Orm's right was only opposed by the small group of crossbow dwarves positioned in the trees on Bygarth's left. Orm ordered the spear dwarves on his right to advance up and over the ridge to try to take advantage of this. Meanwhile, on Orm's left, his crossbow dwarves continued to take heavy casualties, both from Bygarth's crossbow dwarves in the woods and those in the village fields. As his crossbow dwarves wavered 
Orm marched his remaining spear dwarves up to support them. Orm had now committed all of his forces to the fight. He had no further reserves to call upon. But while his left was wavering, Orm's right was advancing across the ridge. Bygarth's crossbow dwarves, hidden amongst the trees, loosed some bolts at Orm's advancing dwarves, but these had little effect, other than to stir Orm's crossbow dwarves into action. A stinging swarm of crossbow bolts buzzed between the trees, and Bygarth's crossbow dwarves discovered that Gambus and Coates have their limitations. They withdrew into the depths of the woodland, leaving their dead behind them. And now Orm urged the spear dwarves on his left forward, charging toward the crossbow dwarves stationed in the trees in front of them. The spear dwarves were greeted by clouds of crossbow bolts, and many of them perished, but still they pressed on, up to the edge of the trees. And, like their fellows on Bygar's left, the crossbow dwarves on Bygarth's right withdrew, seeking safety in the depths of the woodland. And now the final group of crossbow dwarves that Orm had brought forward started to find their range, and the crossbow dwarves that Bygarth had positioned in the village fields started to fall. They withdrew from their position, down the track, toward the plank bridge, pursued by Orm's spear dwarves. And then, from the far side of the river, a horn sounded, and there arose a great cheer, and then the tramping of many booted feet could be heard. Bygarth had ordered his spear dwarves into action, and they were marching down the lane, toward the bridge. Meanwhile, on Orm's right, his spear dwarves had reached the outskirts of the village, advancing behind his crossbow dwarves. They met no opposition. On Orm's left, his spear dwarves split into two groups. The first chased the crossbow dwarves retreating down the track, while the second ventured into the woods to winkle out the skulking crossbow dwarves there. There was hand-to-hand -hand combat among the trees, and although the overhanging branches prevented Orm's spear dwarves from using their spears to full effect, Bygarth's crossbow dwarves had the worst of it, while their comrades on the track retreated in disorder to the bridge. But help was on the way. Bygarth's spear dwarves were even now approaching the bridge, and his crossbow dwarves took heart. Meanwhile, the group of Orm's crossbow dwarves stationed on his right had moved into the village fields. From this position, they could see the bleak brook, and the walled lane down which Bygarth and his spear dwarves were advancing toward it. They began to loose crossbow bolts at these advancing spear dwarves. But the spear dwarves were sheltered by the walls of the lane, and by their sturdy shields, and by flexible meshes of resilient mail, and none of those bolts found its target. And now Bygarth's spear dwarves had reached the bridge. At this point, those of Bygarth's crossbow dwarves who had retreated to the bridge realised that they were trapped between two snarling groups of spear dwarves who were seeking to close each with the other. Deciding that this was not an altogether safe position, the crossbow dwarves now waded into the bleak brook. And at this very moment, on the opposite side of the battlefield, the crossbow dwarves on Bygarth's left, who had taken shelter in the woods, re-emerged, peering cautiously through the trees. But when they observed the large number of Orm's spear and crossbow dwarves advancing through the fields before them, they decided that the odds were not in their favour. Turning back into the woods, they slipped away from the scene. And now, on the narrow plank bridge, the spear dwarves of both sides came together. Orm's spear dwarves had fought their way to the bridge through a hail of crossbow bolts. They had suffered many casualties. Bygarth's spear dwarves were fresh and also more numerous. 
Orm realised that his spear dwarves needed reinforcement and ran across the village fields toward the spear dwarves on his right flank, ordering them to make all haste and join the fray. And they did so with alacrity. And they were joined by the remnants of the crossbow dwarves that Orm had stationed on his left, who had regathered themselves and now also pushed forward toward the bridge, marching down the track, skirting the woods, to a position where they could engage Bygarth's crossbow dwarves, who had retreated over the bleak brook. There was a sharp and stinging exchange of crossbow bolts between the two groups. But, despite their wet feet and consequent discomfort, Bygarth's professional soldiery proved to be the better at hitting the mark. Orm's crossbow dwarves lost the crossbow battle, and his spear dwarves lost the battle on the bridge. Bygarth's spear dwarves cut them down and charged forward, sensing victory. But their relation was short-lived. Orm had not been idle. He had drawn up the reinforcing spear dwarves he had summoned in grim ranks on the track. As Bygarth's spear dwarves charged over the bridge, they ran headlong into this fresh foe, and this time Bygarth's spear dwarves were found wanting. They broke, scattered, and fled. And as the survivors of Bygarth's army stumbled back through the village, each thinking only of his own escape, Orm's spear dwarves marched in good order over the blood-stained bridge on which so many of their fellows had fallen. Thus ended the Battle of Bleakbrook. <laughs>